It's welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, except there's no fishing in this one. Again, guys, lockdown trips, jobs to do, sit back, enjoy. Do you know where you're going to enjoy it? That's right. It's not you doing the jobs, is it? Well, it's lockdown job number 435, people. Obviously, you take more time to look around, you can find more jobs to do. It's like none ending now. Done all the weeding, done all the digging out here. Not to a great extent, extent. Another job I can clip these, but I've got, I've got this all broken down here. Just a panel there, just to stop dog, dogs coming in off the footpath. So I'm gonna measure that, and I think, I have some pallet wood, I don't think that's sort of salvageable, that might be, be a bit I can save. I'm gonna join from there to the tree again. What I should have done was pin it to the tree, but it's rotted out. So, the lucky thing is, I actually have some pallet wood in the garage. I was going to use it for fencing on one of the properties. I think I'll use it on here because I can't go out. I can't do anything. I can't do any jobs except on the property. Right, measure up. Probably come across to that tree there, I think. Just come across to there, I reckon. It all looks good. So I can say almost. Call that four feet in old school language and three feet high four by three four wide three high four feet wide by three feet yes i should be able to remember that but with the way things are going i get straight back to the garage and just forget it's gone you know what they say measure twice and cut once Whatever. One of those days. I cannot tell you the mess this garage is in. I sort the mower out as well in a minute. Just a bomb site. Cannot get anything organised at all. This old virus has messed everybody up. harder folks it's getting harder what did I say I wrote it down didn't I? I've forgotten already four four it was I've got it written down four feet wide might get two out of this for better luck or no <laughs> there we go don't want that one want that one the way it is now four feet wide how many do I need two or three come on Smith tell me work it out which is the strongest it's not like I have grizzly bears coming through See if I can avoid this a second time. Oh, look, I saw the microphone in half. I did say it's going to be one of those days. I think I'll go for two with an overlap. So this is the existing one, but that's how the pallet was. You can see it was a pallet. I'm going to put these strips along the inside to give me my four feet of width, like that, and then knock these ones off. So it's a bit flatter. And that, this, this is stopping it going against the tree. So I'm going to put that one in there and then I'll just fill some slats out here. As usual, I should be taking advantage of... That's right, bent nails. It is only a piece of fencing after all said and done. Keep thumb well clear of hammer. Apply coordination.
do not nail the concrete floor. It goes onto the firewood heap. Turn it over and hopefully any tag ends here I can flatten off. If you're burying any nails, what we call burying them, you'll find they don't bury so well going across the grain, you're better burying them the length of the grain. And when you get them over, hit the tip. That buries the tip. Okay, more sawing. And 54 is what we need. Don't want that piece, want that piece. Bought myself a sharp saw. <laughs> that basically is my panel of fencing done. Just tap this off here, bend those nails over, and I feel some lunch. Come back out and I think I'll stay in it. Right. Hopefully I've got enough stain in here because if I run out, I can't go and get any more with this lockdown on. I'll stain this side as you can see panels finished stain the other side with a different color stain and it's somebody gave me that and I can see where they gave it to me it's a particularly sort of bad night on the curry type of color isn't it like the morning after it's horrible but I'm going to put that on the outside and get this back and I'm not going to nail it guys I'm going to screw this up so I've got my cordless here I'm going to screw it up, so I think uh, I don't want to disturb anything too much. It is only pallet wood after all. Right, let's see if this fits. We've measured it halfway reasonably. That's going to screw in there. And I think it's got to go the other side of that tree there. Get this level. At least I can move it from there. Looks about right there. I think I'll put the R2 in. That's oh, solid. So you're going to tie in Board across here to the tree, board across there to the tree. Bob's your uncle, Charlie's your aunt, and more for the bonfire. That should go there, hopefully. Now here. Uh, 
and solid there, that's just enough. It's enough to keep the wolves and bears away. Just got to stain this piece. Hopefully we've got enough brown stain for that one. Well, house is all squeaky clean and painted now, as you can see. Got a good coat on that. Um, that propane feed pipe I've painted black there was copper with all splodgy paint marks on all over it. So I've, I've painted that all the way down because it feeds in through the house here. And I've just got one repair mark up there, which I've, we get every two years. So basically the house is done. Now it's off to find another job. Now when I was up here painting all the house, I noticed up here on the edge of the eaves, I'll take you up there, as you can see I've actually knocked some cement up here, a little bit wet but whatever, that's all I have left, I can't go and get anything because it's locked down, just here, I should have cement under there, now I can't get right under because I'm going to start breaking these off, they're the end ones, but I'm going to try and put a little bit of cement there, a little bit of cement here, it stops the rain driving up under there, so it's the only thing I think I can do here, just in case, I don't think. Now that's a wide tile there, you can see it goes across. So it's an extra width tile, every other one there. Just the way they made the roof, I guess. This is all put up new, about 12 years ago. So I suppose to lose a bit of concrete like that's not too bad. Big problems we always get is this moss. Eats into the mortar, into the cement. Just one tip if you do these, uh, I'm going to call it the lockdown jobs, all these little ones. If you do do cementing, don't forget it will burn your fingers. Not burn and catch them on fire, but it's not good, don't rub it in your eyes. Probably better to use a pair of gloves. If you're like me, you probably end up pushing it in with your fingers anyway, so that's why the gloves are better. Obviously I should have somebody holding the ladder and all that old stuff, I've got no time for that. This is the way not to do it, paint the house first. It might not be a work of art, but I can assure you, it will set exactly the same and as hard as a professional's. And this, this will at least last me a good few years and keep the uh, water from going up in there. Good view from up on a ladder. Not so much of a good view on the way down at speed. I'll just fi finish it off. A little bit level using, I don't know, that part we call it the heel, I think, is it? Is it the heel? I guess. The front part here is the toe. We'll just marry it into the next bit. Obviously a roof or somebody will be, will be crying in his beer at this. But listen, it will set and it will stop water getting in there. Just run fingers along there. There we go. Done around the front. There we go. It's about as neat as it's going to get. Now, I had a little bit left over, so I found a spot round by the garage that needs a doing, the garage. Oh, by the way, look, I've stained all these over by the world famous chimney here. I've stained all those this morning as well, and I've done some of the pots. So. All we need is some nice sunbathing weather now. One thing I will say I've noticed is this year, the wallflowers, these ones, the wallflowers, they're coming out in flower, obviously, but they're very stalky, what I call very stalky. Look at the, the growth up here, which normally means they're, they're stretching for the sunlight. And I wonder if that because we've had so little sun. You can see these, I mean, they're pretty flowers. I have to put them in about September, October. Got to get rid of the weeds, another job, weeding. But they just seem stalky. Is anybody out there a wallflower expert? Can they tell me? Are they? Is it not a good year for wallflower? Now, back last winter, there's this huge split in my cherry tree, apple tree, whatever you want to call this, blossom tree, and I packed it out with clay. There, trying to use it as a sort of poultice. And um, I don't know. I saw some dead wood off the other side, and I thought, actually, do you know what? It's totally dead this year. No, it's not. I do believe, although it's very late. That looks like the start of the flowers to come out. So this might be nice if it does come out. I wonder, has my clay poultice here, there, has it actually saved it? Probably not. Down here I've got a big piece I've been meaning to do for years. I use the drain pipe to fill up when it's rainy in the pond and I ran a cable. There was indeed a cable was underneath the lawn there. 
um, to run a pump so I pulled it out because I never did use it much and you can see down here there's a hole where the cable went in the water gets in the hole and eventually it breaks the render away eats away so while I've got a bit of cement left correct just use it to fill that up and I can fill the hole at the same time it stops any creatures getting in there as well normally I'll be using sharp sand all I've got to use is the little bit of sand I've found a tiny tiny bag of sand to go with cement just build a sand and it will do the job I mean this is when it's gone off I can uh, get this one painted and another job is crossed off the list That is the problem guys, a little knowledge is a bad thing sometimes, if you end up doing a lot of jobs yourself. Of course now I'm looking wherever else there might be bits off, just there. Right after this I'll move along and show you the next job. The other problem I've got is on my gate posts here, I've filled them before and I've now filled them in again but see these tiny cracks like that, that's another one, look. That's like rotten at the top and in there gets wood lice. Now is it the wood lice that make the hole or is the hole just a natural rotting out place there and the wood lice go into the hole? I've already filled it here so I'm going to have to fill that one again. Anybody out there know? I've already filled it with a wood filler and now I'm just going to seed it up a bit. Uh, obviously I don't need these rotting out They've been here 13 years. You see I've filled before up here. So what is it people? Is it wood lice making the holes or is it just a crack like this and the wood lice go in there? In fact, do wood lice eat wood? I want to know before I attack them. Here we go, see if we've got enough of this wood filler to trap those guys in there. You cannot beat nature, can you people? You just cannot beat it. It's constantly on your case, constantly attacking you all the time. Weeds, creatures, wood lice, moles. Oh, don't get me started on the moles. And on top of that, I use a good exterior stain. I blow the dust so it carefully goes straight down my throat. This is that uh, sort of fast drying wood stain which I'm not a great lover, I've got to be perfectly honest. Because it goes on like water and you can't really get what I call a good pull on the brush. You can't get a good pull. It's, I think it's yeah, an exterior oak wood stain for oak pillars. It's going to be an oak ladder if it's not careful. So all these jobs are getting done in a lockdown. It's driving me up the wall, as it's no doubt driving a lot of you up the wall. I do notice how quiet it is on the roads now. Just people going to work, working in the hospitals and stuff like that. Another tip is when I use anything like varnishing, I use a soft hair brush. You don't want a stiff brush because it's going to leave track lines all over it. Well, that's the staining done. But one of the things I don't like doing is cutting the lawn when it's slightly damp. If it's slightly damp or you've had some rain, it doesn't cut the same, but worse, the worm casts come up because the ground is soft. And then you have problems. Here's a tip that might help you. After you cut the lawn, you want to clean the mower for next time. This is what I do. So you can see here, all the mud splattering here. This is worm casts and bits of mud together, mostly worm casts, together with the grass. Now what I use here, I'll show you, is my mum's kitchen knife. It's got a nice round end to it there, if you can see that. And that fits just right. 
and I can chip away there without going through the plastic and look at the size that's going to come down here that is massive look there's nearly half an inch across and of course I've cleared all this down this way if that's there when the blade goes around it's going to hit it and the reason this area gets it is because as the blade goes around it has this curve here I'll show you that side it has this curve here and that comes around like this be careful with sharp blades this one's blunt and what it does throws it into the box there that's what that angles for that flange to throw it into the box but it also tends to flick it up here and it sticks and that's what happens so do not let it get this bad as soon as you moan your lawn you try and get it straight off if you can and uh, then you should be okay but I left this one specially to show you this is what happens and it's look it's heavier to to work okay the blade point here can clip it in there and also the drive belt in here which goes up round is a big belt goes up and it goes around here on a tension spring you'll put an extra pressure on your belt and then your drive belt breaks if you break your drive belt then you're going to be very unhappy because you can't mow the lawn so you can see there I can scrape all that off there it comes come off back to the metal there you go that's what it should be done first time round. But I thought I'd leave it and just show you how bad it can, how bad it can get. Right, I'll get the rest done, and then I'll show you exactly how much came off the bottom of this mower. Just check out all this huge amount of worm cast and grass, mud in other words. I've been driving around with that and that's not good. And if this stays wet, it will rust out the bottom of your mower. So every time you've done a mower and you think it might be stuck, just get it up on an axle stand, one of these, like this. Check it out, clean it off, and hopefully you have trouble free mowing. Now this one's been a bit pain started, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull the plug and check it for carbon deposits in there. It's a petrol. Sorry it's going to burn, it's going to have carbon. You pull this off carefully. I normally only do this, say, about once a year, or if it's, if it's playing up a bit, a bit. Look, pull off your cap there, which is, saves you getting a shock. Sends a current down through there. There's a spark plug down there. Make sure you get the right size. Uh, spark plug remover if you're not going to put that just pinch that there I'll show you I've got one of these that has an angle to it good grip there and it can rotate around slide it dead straight over the top just twist it until it locates like that it's on okay and then carefully keep it dead straight otherwise you might snap the plug Ooh. now you can either do it by hand you can do it by hand if you can't do it and it won't break put a tube or another spanner over the top of that I'll try it first there it goes it did break but if not you can put a tube over to give you a bigger leverage point it's always worth checking these especially if the mowers coughing a bit slower to start that type of thing start of the season and you can obviously buy a new plug should you want for those who don't know this is the suck squeeze bang blow principle of the piston and this sends the spark to ignite the vapor not the petrol liquid of the vapor and that is called the gap the spark jumps between the gap and that little pin bit there now you can see that sort of carboned up a little bit now you can either wire brush it or i've got the wrong sandpaper here because i was doing another job you can clean it with a bit of sandpaper and if you wanted look up in the manual and check the plug gap there because it will have a measurement in so many thou and you get a feeler gauge what they call a feeler gauge with different widths so I can just imagine putting that in the gap there make sure it's the right gap I just personally I don't use this paper I use a smaller grit paper and a wire brush clean it up a little bit and you can put it in I could imagine just like that you see move it backwards and forwards around the edges clean it up as best you can get the wire brush in there and put it back and it should start pretty well and I also I rub it around here as well like this so I'll get this one cleaned up we'll get it back in and then we'll do the blade. Okay, plug's been cleaned. I start it first, get my thread, 
go in with my fingers once you got it on with your fingers just put the plug spanner in there and just pinch it up I do it as tight as I can but without overcooking it because you might want to get it off again a couple of little tweaks on goes the cap make sure that it's located nice back comes my axle stand and down I go to get off the propeller okay sometimes these come off easily sometimes they don't and you can see around that the nut there is a bit it's a bit messy so once you get it sort of located there you might find just tapping it right on like this gives you plenty of grip and also hold the blade carefully you can if it's a very sharp blade don't do this put a towel around it but you know this one I know is blunt because I've chopped enough things up with it and there that's it that's gone again you could put a tube over the end of this if you want more leverage to get it off any spanner really that's what I do these are all my ways of doing it I don't know what the proper way is who knows just been doing it for years and years and years it works take it off And then we'll get it in. I'm going to clean off these bits. See how the grass sticks to it there? So that can all be cleaned off. And um, then I'll take it in and just tone it up a little bit on the uh, front edge there on the glider. That, that, that's, that's, look, I'm not going to cut myself on that. It's blunt. Put a little bit of an edge on it. It should cut the drier grass better. Into the totally awesome workshop. And we're going to make the sparks fly. See that shined up already. Now listen, that blade all narrowly would be out here. So you can tell I've used this and used this and I just keep using it until I can't cut the lawn and I have to buy another one. So there we go guys, how easy was that, make sure everything's switched off in the workshop, that's what the workshop's here for, out we go, refit it, easy peasy. I'm going to look so stupid if this thing doesn't start, aren't I going to look stupid, oh my god. <clears throat> make sure it has got oil in it, your mower, of and lawnmower oil, put this one on, locate it bolt on you can put a little bit of grease on that bolt I've already done it the last time but a little bit of grease on the end of the bolt makes it a lot easier to come off and then pinch it up tight and I put an extra washer on spreads the load a bit more for when I hit nasty tree roots or big stones or something like that and again don't want to overcook the nut The last pull I try and keep close to this angle so that I'm just squeezing it like this. I don't want the spanner to slip off and I skim my knuckles on the blade, which is now sharp. That's enough because I've got to get it off. That, folks, is the totally awesome way I service my mower. Down we go. Axle stand. Away. Let's see if we can get the old girl started. Check the oil. Now it's up to you what height you want to set the wheels at and your cutting level, but also starting it. In cold weather you generally would want the choke on, but in warm weather you might flood it with the choke. So you've got to sort of suck it and see.
Well, do you know what? I'm getting close to being jobbed out. Pretty well jobbed out. And I love work. I do like, I don't have any trouble with motivation. But this lockdown does get to you. Eventually, I think it sort of grinds all of us down. Anyway, I've got more films to come. I've got a few more films to make. I want to go fishing though, guys. Don't we all? I just want to get out on the beach. The beach is the one that's drawing me. I want to go beach fishing, wild, open. I know we don't catch much off the beach here in the UK. What can, what can we do about it? But I'm thinking, well, nobody's been fishing for about three months. God, they're going to be writhing all over the beach, jumping on the hooks. Perhaps not. We'll see you guys next time. Don't forget, watch out for our films. Hit the TA uh, Outdoors and the TA Fishing sub buttons. Hit your little like buttons. Do all your button pressing, all your button clicking, whatever you can. And we'll see you in the next film. Thank you.